uh, and Professor Sameh Abdul Wahab. Can you come, please? Uh, this session of uh, HECC, it, it is interactive session, will uh, talk about HECC from operate to wait, passing through ablate, radiate, medicate, or sometimes debate. We have four panelists, our eminent speakers. Uh, I have introduction for each one from uh, surgery point of view, interventional radiology, uh, hepatology, and uh, oncology. First, I have to welcome our eminent uh, chairpersons for responding to our invitation. It will be very beneficial, and please, we have to get our maximum benefit uh, because we'll hear from very eminent experts in the field of HECC. I will start with brief introduction, and then first one, Dr. Kohla, and then Dr. Warrai, and then Dr. Hussam, surgery, and last one, systemic therapy. Can we start, please? There is the variations in the treatment of uh, guidelines, and this is, might be inevitable because there is difference in the prevalence, etiology, local practice, and uh, medical insurance. This is a multidisciplinary team, hepatologist, oncologist, radiologist, and surgeon. This is a comparison between the guidelines, acyl, abazyl, easel, sometimes ablation before resection and resection before ablation. In the intermediate, uh, sometimes adopt uh, tear. And this is Japan guidelines. It depends on the liver function. There is, if there is extra hepatic meds, they give systemic therapy, and the size here is three centimeter. A Chinese guidelines, if there is extra hepatic meds, they adopt this with systemic therapy, and this we'll discuss with interventional radiology now. And the size here is five centimeter. Also, for Japan or Japanese guidelines, transplantation, here is the five, five, 500, size number, and the alpha fetoprotein. Just to give overview about the different guidelines, and this is Hong Kong. This is a basal guidelines. The classification or the, uh, uh, depends on the extra hepatic meds. If there is meds, they give systemic therapy, and then according to the child, A, B, or C, and the standard therapy, early resection, ablation, and intermediate taste or systemic therapy as an alternative treatment. This is the easy guidelines, more or less like BCLC. And this is the American guidelines. They may adopt tear at a downstaging before uh, liver transplantation. And now I call Dr. Mohammed Kohla, please, to come. He will give us a brief talk about the role of hepatology, uh, hepato uh, role of hepatologists in the multidisciplinary team, and overview about the update Barcelona Clinic, uh, Barcelona 22. Father Thank you, Dr. Muhammad, for your presentation. My dear chairpersons, my dear colleagues. So I am going to talk about the role of hepatologists in multidisciplinary team. 
As we all know that uh, MDT management is based on four main pillars, hepatologist, radiologist, surgeon, and oncologist. So basically, the role of a hepatologist is to start with in the process of surveillance for HCC in high-risk patients, those with cirrhosis by ultrasound and alpha fetoprotein. Then evaluation of HCC patients within the multidisciplinary team for proper staging and assumption and identification of the proper line of management. Then follow-up of patients and management of complications. Not only this, also it goes beyond that into pre-transplant evaluation and do their criteria to choose, Milan versus extended criteria. So as we all know, that HC staging is multifaceted. It is based on three main parameters to evaluate patients before, during, and after HC management, which are patient condition, liver condition, and tumor condition. The best example for patient condition is using the AGOG performance status. This is what is used in the majority of relevant guidelines, that, such as BSLC. And also, we have many parameters to evaluate liver condition. The standard, which, which one is used, is child pew staging. And as regards the tumor uh, characteristic, the example of this is TNM staging. As we can see in this graph, most of the staging systems do not put in consideration all the three parameters altogether. They focus on two only, not more than two, except BCLC staging system and Hong Kong staging system. So, as we all know that child score is based on three lab parameters, bilirubin, albumin, prothrombin, and two clinical parameters, uh, presence of ascites and encephalopathy. So also the ECOG performance status, Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group performance status, is categorized into uh, from state status zero till status five. Status zero is the ideal patient that you all ha uh, hope to catch and manage, and this patient has the most probable chance of uh, better survival. And also we can accept status one in most of the guidelines to choose a radical or curative uh, management. Unfortunately, status three and four are not suitable for any intervention, whether surgical, non-surgical, or systemic therapy or whatever. This cartoon summarizes the different status according to uh, ECOG status. This is to memorize uh, the, 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 criteria, the criteria of patient in each status. So what about the timeline of staging in HCC? It started as early as in the 80s of the last century. The first valid staging system was the ECODA staging system. Uh, then came the CLIP score, Gretsch score, BCLC system that you are widely used nowadays. It was first implemented in 1999 and still used till today and is the, the staging system of choice in most institutes all over the world. Then comes the QP staging system, GIC staging system, Tokyo, a, uh, some Chinese staging systems, AJCC, uh, UICC, TNM staging system, and lastly, Hong Kong liver cancer staging system. It is similar to BCLC uh, with respect that it puts, it, uh, it puts in consideration the, th the three main pillars of proper staging, which is performance status, liver function, and tumor stage. As we all know that, you have seen this slide many, many times, that BLC system uh, is, uh, is categorized into five stages. Zero, A, B, C, and D. Uh, stages zero and D are the early stages. Stage B is the intermediate stage, while stage C is the advanced stage, and stage D is the terminal stage. So we have seen a lot of slides about this. Recently, uh, BCLC has endorsed some updates in the standard staging system regarding new terms and the new treatment uh, strategies. This, when more data came up, we have more data about immunotherapy, immune checkpoints, Professor Ashraf Omar has pointed to this. That's why uh, the staging system has been modified a little bit. So they have some new terms, such as the treatment stage migration, TSM, is a shift of the recommendation to the option that would be considered a priority for a more advanced stage. We can, we can use systemic therapy during, for a patient during intermediate stage, which was not in the previous uh, version. So this is an important point. The second important point is the term which is called untreatable progression. Some patients with stays, for example, despite having repeated test sessions, they still have the tumor progressing, but they are amenable to systemic therapy. So we can use more advanced uh, or more, uh, another line of therapy in this category of patients who did not respond to TACE. So what is also new in the update this year is that BCLC stage B 
is a heterogeneous stage. It is, not, it is not a simple stage. It has a wide variety of patients. And that's why we have to, to have a wide variety of options. That's why BCLC stage B was stratified into three distinct groups regarding the line of management. So some patients with BCLC stage, with DCLC B stage, uh, with well-defined nodules are candidate for liver transplant, like those within Milan criteria. They have multiple nodules and they can still be transplanted, provided that the AFP does not exceed 1,000. This is an important point. Another group of BCLC B patients in whom OLT is not feasible, but they still have good blood flow. They have patent portal veins. They have good hepatic circulation. These patients are ideal candidates for TACE and interventional radiogenic therapy. The third category of BCLC B patients are those with diffuse infiltrative lesion. They still don't have vascular invasion, but the nature of the tumor is diffuse infiltrative. We should not proceed into this in these patients because most probably they will not benefit from this. That's why we can shift the line of management from advanced into intermediate by using systemic therapy. This is the concept of new BCLC. So as we can see, we can uh, swift the patient from one stage uh, for, for, from one line of management to another line of management within the same stage in case of failure, uh, failure of improvement and persistent progression, continuous progression, despite appropriate management. We have seen this to summarize the whole figure of the modified BCLC. As we can see that there are some modifications in the management, in the standard management. Systemic therapy is no longer used only for advanced stage. It can be used in some category of patients with intermediate stage, even for early stages. Interestingly, TACE is not only used for intermediate stage. In some uh, subset of patients during the early stages in whom have included tear in this uh, classification and actually some patients just HC can be treated by tear radio embolization provided that the tumor size does not exceed eight centimeters in diameter and lastly as professor Asher Farmer has mentioned about that we have a lot of modifications in the advanced stage systemic therapy surafenib used to be the standard of care and the first line therapy for the past 15 years since the publication of the SHARP trial. But recently, the role of immunotherapy, immune checkpoint inhibitors, uh, also have evolved. That's why the first line therapy has changed a little bit. But we should know, we should see in this slide that if we use sorafenib, the advantage of using sorafenib, uh, as Dr. Asher Farmer mentioned, it is more easier for some patients who cannot tolerate transportation and getting some systemic chemotherapy and something like this, uh, infusion, hospitalization. So it is easy for many patients. Also for sorafenib, we have second line option. We can give regorafenib. We still have third line option. We can give cabozantinib. But so far, unfortunately, if we use atezolizumab, bevacizumab, the second line would be clinical trials. So this is uh, the most important points regarding advances in the most updated BCL system. system. And thank you for attention. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mohammed Kohla, Professor of uh, Hepatology and Gastroenterology National Liver Institute. I will have a brief introduction before uh, Professor Mohammed al Professor of Intervention Radiology and the Head of the Department in National Liver Institute. This is uh, Barcelona 22. They said there is a very central rule for interventional radiologists because after down staging, we may, we may uh, get, uh, allow the patient for transplantation. And this is a paradigm treatment for uh, TACE. 
uh, intermediate stage with low burden of the tumor, we start with stays. If there is failure, we'll shift to systemic therapy. Just remind the failure. If there is two in consecutive ineffective uh, response, the lesion uh, viable more than 50%, or there is increase in the number of the tumor inside the liver, or there is development of vascular invasion or extrahepatic meds. If uh, there is intermediate stage with high burden tumor, we might start, we might start with uh, systemic therapy, and then after down staging, uh, we can uh, uh, do taste for the patient, and this is what Dr. Kohla said, treatment stage migration. Here, if the, if the taste suitable, we'll start with taste, and if not, we'll start with uh, uh, systemic therapy. If there is refractoriness, we can start with immune therapy, atezolizumab or uh, second line. And this is Barcelona B, if there is, and C, multiple nodules. It depends on the number and the size. If there is muscular, if there is a, a, a macrovascular invasion here, we can give taste, resection, radioembolization, or hepatic arterial infusion chemotherapy. If there is extra hepatic spread, we give, just give only taste or uh, HAIC. If there is local regional treatment, in case of non-metastatic, we give, we give taste third resection. If there is metastasis, we'll give only taste and uh, hepatic arterial infusion chemotherapy. And this we have seen now many times. This is the Barcelona 22. Uh, many changes, even, but there is a new one here, as Dr. Kohla said, there is maybe rule for the tear if the lesion is eight centimeter or less. And is there, uh, if there is a fractionist to taste, if the patient child A, we can give molecular targeted therapy. If the child B, we give hepatic arterial infusion chemotherapy. This is according to the J Japan Society of Hepatology. If there is progression increase 20% of the uh, existing nodule or new intrahepatic nodule, there is BCLB progression B or progression C1. But if there is new extrahepatic lesion or new vascular invasion, this is Barcelona C progression C2. And this is just will debate with Dr. Warrai now. This is the American, and they stated their may downsize for before liver transplantation. This is a real life patient, female, 55 years old, given interference seven years back, performance status zero. This is the lab. She child A6, right hepatic focal lesion, occupying segment five, six, seven, and eight, 14 by 11 by 10 centimeter, compressing the right portal vein, but still patent, and Doppler also uh, stated it is patent, and there is a large port hepatic lymph node. This is the arterial border and the delayed multiphasic CT. And uh, female BS0, child A6, and this is Barcelona Clinic B. Extended liver transplant. This is the left arm for transplant. If the well defined tumor burden and the preserved flow with access for hepatic. Uh, for uh, the, 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 the artery for, uh, for the taste, we can give taste. If there is diffuse infiltrative extensive by lumbar for systemic therapy. So we'll discuss with Dr. Warren now after his talk, what is the best for this patient? Is our taste, we can start taste from the start or we have to start systemic therapy first or if there is any other treatment modality for this patient? Come Dr. Warren, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you very much for the scientific committee. Thanks, Professor Ra, Mr. Chairman. In the talk, you can Dr. Muhammad Ra'ad talab in the talk to be on the updates for the rule of intervention radiology in the management of HC accordingly the updated guidelines. So the uh, title of my presentation is to uh, describe uh, the status of the radiological intervention of HSCC in the updated guidelines. And this is my agenda, short brief about the intervention radiology for you, and then 
what is the status of the intervention ideology uh, uh, in BCLC 2022. As Professor Aal and Professor Kohla said, we have many guidelines. We have three major groups of guidelines. We have uh, the European guidelines in the form of PCLC, ISMO, American, ASLED, NSCN, and MD Anderson, and Asian group have also uh, widespread guidelines. All of these guidelines have uh, endorsed the patient, the liver, and the tumor as the parameters of staging and the treatment. And all of these guidelines have used two main principles of treatment in the radiology or in the interventional radiology that, that are the ablations and the arterial embolization. Only the American guidelines used what's called portal vein embolization. Regarding the thermal ablation, we have the microwave and the radio frequency, and both of them are the electromagnetic waves. And of course, you know that the uh, microwave has several advantages over uh, radio frequency because of its high temperature input. And because of this capability, the high temperature input, more than 150, there is no heat sink effect, there is, no, there is a capability of picker burn, no stop by charring tissue and could treat fibrotic tumors very, in a very good way and of course it has a short time. Thermal ablation in all of the guidelines ha should treat patients with good performance score with uh, a child A or a child P with tumor size less than 2 centimeters in most of the force radio frequency and less than 4 centimeters in microwave and the number of the tumor should not exceed 3, three, three, centimeter, three tumors each of them not more than three centimeters, and the site. The site was not uh, feasible in a specific situation, especially the codate and gallbladder invasion. Site is not a contraindication right now because we have adjuvant therapy, adjuvant techniques or, uh, to help use of the uh, ablation, like the artificial ascites and minor laparotomy to do what's called surgically assisted ablation. As you see in this picture, this is a case of artificial ascites, and this is a case of uh, surgical assisted ablation. The embolization therapy, as Professor Iman said, we have the conventional therapy using the, um, the using what's called libidol with a systemic th with uh, the chemotherapy, using what's called taste with drug eluting beads. These are the beads, marshmallow-like, soaking the chemotherapy with a slow release of this chemotherapy and doing the embolization and the ischemia for the tumor as well, and the radio embolization and the recent data have uh, stated, uh, according to the legacy study, that, uh, uh, that radio embolization could, used, could be used better in, in a single tumor of uh, less or equal to 8 centimeter. All of these transarterial therapies are equal in the endpoints, which is the survival, they may differ in the tumor progression, but finally, the tumor the overall survival is the same uh, between all types of transarterial therapies. The right portal vein embolization that's mentioned in some uh, guidelines, if you see like a tumor, if this is a portal vein, if we include the right portal vein like this, we will get this as I will describe. This is a tumor in the right loop, and this is a left loop, which is smaller and after portal vein embolization you will see that the tumor get shrunken and the right loop also shrunken and the left loop got very much bigger and this is after resection. This technique is used whenever there is a plan for extended right or right hepatectomy for large, for large tumor exactly like uh, what Professor uh, uh, have described. And this is the MD Anderson guidelines that describe in name and frankly the use of the portal vein embolization to increase the future or the, the reserve of the river. Regarding the BCLC, this is a BCLC in uh, uh, 1218, you will see a sporadic, uh, a sporadic mention or sporadic situation of the interventional ideology. This is ablation, ablation and embolization. Only three situations. If you look for uh, the BCLEC 2022 with its new strategies or new strategies of the exchanging that, that treatment, they stated two definitions that Professor Kohler said, what's called treatment stage migration is to shift 
from a treatment option to another one that is uh, in uh, 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 could be a, pr a, a priority treatment for an advanced stage, untreatable progression to stop and advance to shift another to shift another treatment and down and this down staging by using this expansile or expanding uh, a strategy of definition PCLC has it changed much the rule of the intervention ideology you will find if you look for this sketch you will find the rule of the intervention ideology became endorsed became in in, in every state on or every stage of HSC if you look for stage zero you will find that the first option of treatment is ablation but if ablation is not feasible, we can do embolization, teeth or tear. If you will go to, to study stage A, you will find that the first option is also resection. But if resection is not suitable, we, we should uh, go to the ablation. This is intervention ontology. And if ablation is not suitable, according to the guideline, we will go to teeth. So teeth under this area covers all uh, the stages of the of the uh, of the Barcelona but it is not the first option if you look to the uh, Barcelona if you look to Barcelona P stage B and as Dr. Kohler said we are now classifying uh, stage B into three stages P1 P2 and P3 and we'll f if you look for stage P1 or uh, 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 confident tumors that is amenable for, for transplant, we can use uh, embolization to down stage or to bridge for a time for, uh, in a preparation for transplant. This alone could be a, a treatment for stage P2, and it is restricted away from uh, stage 3. For my home message and to conclude, PCLC 2022 expanded the role of the intervention ideology by the strategies of treatment exchange like tumor stage migration and untreatable progression and DAO staging. The terminology is the Gayaret scope, Gayaret rule will function, the function of intervention ideology. The place of taste can zaman for all the stage P, the way it is restricted a stage P2. And finally, in contrast to the real life practice and to the most recent results of TEAR in the advanced HCC, the 2022 updates does not recognize any rule of the, of the intervention ideology, especially TEAR for advanced stage C because of its negative phase three trials. And thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Waray, very much. And now welcome Professor Mohammed Abel Futuh, Professor of Clinical Oncology in Fair University. Now I give a brief uh, introduction for Professor Hossam Suleiman, Professor of Hepatobiliary Surgery and Liver Transplantation, National Liver Institute. This is the third uh, multidisciplinary team, how to deal with HCC. Two minutes, Dr. Hossam, uh, from a surgical point of view. This is, I think, the portal vein thrombosis, one of the contraindications for surgery or taste. This is in the past, now it changes. This is a classification according to Schengen classification, class 1, 0, and 1, 2, and 3, 4. 3, this is the main uh, portal vein uh, trunk, and this is extended to superior mesenteric vein. Here, as we see, may, we might go also for the main portal vein uh, in the Chinese guidelines for resection, hemihepatectomy, or uh, yeah, if the, the lesion is resectable, they do uh, resection after downstaging. If not resectable, they can give taste, and we'll discuss this also with uh, surgery and radiology uh, after we finish this uh, session, inshallah. This is the classification according to the Japan classification, VB1, this is uh, uh, segmental, VB2, this is a second order, VB3, first order, and VB4, this is the main trunk. Also, 
uh, may in the VB3 transplant or taste, VB4 also transplant or taste. This is, I think, paradigm shift in the concept of intervention for patients with HCC and portal vein thrombosis. So surgical resection is widely indicated regardless of the vascular invasion, tumor number or size. This is in the Chinese guidelines. In the easy, the uh, contraindication to do surgery if there is ma ma macrovascular invasion. Japanese, they said if there is segmental or subsegmental, they can do surgery. I think uh, in the BCLC update, even we should have normal bilirubin and no portal hypertension for resection, but sometimes minor degree of clinically significant portal hypertension in Asian guidelines they accept the patient for resection. Also, the guideline accepted for UCSF, we remind the single lesion, less than 6.5, two, three lesion, the uh, largest one, 4.5, and the maximum diameter, eight uh, centimeter. Laparoscopic or robotic resection, it has advantages. It's less invasive, less complication, and non-significant impact on the liver function. Major hepatectomy has risk with cirrhosis. Transplant in Japanese depends on the rule of 5-5-500, size, number, and alpha fetoprotein. Living a donor liver transplant for advanced vascular carcinoma, carcinoma, they said if beyond the Milan, we have to down a stage before transplantation. This is very important paper, weight and not a blade. This is, a, the ty this is a, 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 our a session. They said if there is T1 less than two centimeter, we have to wait, not a blade, until it is T2, two to five centimeter or two to three uh, focal lesion. And they found that there is less than 10% risk of tumor progression. If we adopt this policy, wait and not a blade. But they said if alpha fetoprotein more than 500 and there is rapid tumor progression, no, not wait, but a blade. This is very important subject for multifocal hepatocellular carcinoma. If we can combine resection with in, uh, radiofrequency intraoperative, they said it's much better than this alone. So it's a promising future management. We combine the resection with intraoperative ablation. This is a real life case, and we'll hear from Dr. Hassam his opinion. 60 years male patients given direct acting. 2015, BS0, ultrasonography, there is focal lesion segment 61 centimeter. This is the lab. Just attract your attention below 1.6, and there is collaterals. So there is portal hypertension. The triphasic, they did find the lesion, but dynamic MRI, there is a focal lesion segment 6. So it's a BS0, child 5. It's very early stage. This is the MRI. So according to Barcelona, this patient has portal hypertension, no resection. So if candidate for a transplant, will go to transplant. If not, so will go to ablation. The decision for transplant, if not for ablation. I think you will hear the comment from the chairpersons and the panelists after the talk. This is another patient in brief, given direct acting 19, 2019, child ABS zero, and there is triphasic two focal lesion, segment seven and eight, size is four by 4.5, and the second one, segment eight, four by, point, four by three. Endoscopy, there is a small non-risky viruses. This is BLC B, A5, BSC zero. Test was done twice, and this is after test. There is one viable lesion and second lesion well adequately managed. And this is uh, this after, uh, this is a CT uh, multiphasic after this twice. There is vi viable lesion, but the size now is 3.3. .3. So, after down staging from B C L C B to A, is this better to go for transplant or ablation or retest? We'll discuss with our eminent chairpersons. Tur Hussain, please come, please come.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ثانك يو ايفربادي ثانك يو دكتور محمد يعني بيوند ذا توكينج اباوت ذا سكورز اند ذا سيلكشن اوكي اي ويل تراي تو جيف يو فيري براكتيكال اوف وات وي ار دوينج كارنتلي ان اور ليفر انستيتوت اند اول ذا الايد سنترز وي ورك ويز وين از ا سيرجن وين وي جادج اتش سي وي اولويز كير اباوت ذا ليفر ريزيرف as a liver reserve either uh, functionally or uh, volumetrically uh, assessed or, or the gross uh, histological uh, uh, stage. Uh, for treatment, uh, I, the, the uh, stages is in general in, in a very simple way, either the, the tumor is available, then we, we think here about treatment. The liver is favorable, then we have a place uh, to resect or to transplant. Uh, tumor is favorable with the liver function and the reserve are favorable. We can do other options. We have to, we can discuss in a multidisciplinary uh, management for the other options according to each stage. Um, our role as a surgeon comes uh, either liver resection, whether open or laparoscopic. Sometimes we do some kind of a ablation or a guided ablation, either open or laparoscopic. And uh, liver uh, transplantation, uh, we have here in Egypt liver, living donor liver transplantation uh, only. Um, nowadays, we are doing more uh, assessments for the uh, indications and the uh, techniques for resections. And we, uh, practically speaking, we care more now about the metastatic assessment, which was a little bit neglected when we, we, we now see too many patients with metastatic uh, lesions, and we have to exclude before decision uh, making. And we are now using more and more advanced uh, technologies like the uh, 3D imaging, volumetries, and 3D navigation systems for planning. And uh, this um, had helped us to uh, increase the outcomes and uh, success of surgery and decision making, knowing more uh, helps us to do properly and do uh, more uh, effective surgeries. Um, of course, we, you know all the types, different types of resections, but uh, the more we go in cirrhosis, the more of minor uh, hepatectomies can be to, uh, tolerated. The number of uh, major resections in cirrhosis is very low. Uh, we always uh, use the intraoperative ultrasound as a routine. Um, surgery without intraoperative ultrasound is missing uh, half of its uh, value to exclude other lesions. Many patients can be excluded at the time of surgery uh, just by doing uh, intraoperative ultrasound either open or laparoscopic. Uh, open resections um, are the standard in many uh, centers. Uh, there are different incisions. We try to minimize our incisions as much as we can. But now we have increasing number of laparoscopic resections for the benefits uh, on the patient and the results. And also we are looking forward to have robotic surgery here in, uh, in Egypt. Different modalities, of course, are present, but we always uh, have to discuss with anesthesia always and all the time about the uh, CVB and uh, technical issues. Uh, there are many, many uh, techniques for parenchymal trisection in Egypt. Uh, nowadays, we are using only the harmonic scalpel and the CUSA. The radiofrequency ablation device are now decreasing because of cost, increasing cost. And, but there are many other uh, theorems. Uh, ways also. Uh, we care more about the technical and uh, hemostasis assessment when we always try to have more technologies in this field. Laparoscopic resection is now the standard for the left lateral uh, hepatectomy for peripheral lesions and we are doing more and more uh, cases. Uh, the only obstacle always is the cost of the uh, uh, tools and and this is how we have the incisions, uh, very small incision, despite the uh, very uh, uh, large lesions uh, um, that we used, resected with very major uh, resections. What about ALPS? Uh, ALPS is a surgical option. We always discuss with the radiology and with our colleagues and with the 
our meetings about the residual liver for huge HC. This is one of the solutions. It has a, a smaller uh, advantage in H in cirrhotics, but it is present. We, we, we are doing a considerable number of uh, ALPS patients for uh, in conjunction also with embolization as a portal vein embolization or recently hepatic vein embolization, combined portal and hepatic vein embolization to increase the residual uh, liver. Uh, the uh, uh, techniques of ALPS are different, there are many techniques, but we try to minimize the uh, burden in the first operation as much as possible because it is the uh, key issue in the outcome of ALPS. What about liver transplantation? Okay, you have heard a lot about liver transplantation. I will not uh, speak uh, uh, much more about the guidelines and so on and so, but I will tell you some of the current practice of our current practice in liver transplantation for HSC. We all know that it is ideal treatment, treats the cirrhosis, treats the uh, HSC. Uh, it's better uh, survival, five year survival and long term survival and the lowest, the lowest uh, recurrence in, uh, compared to other uh, uh, treatments. But there are special issues, the metastatic assessment. Most of, practically speaking, the patients who had recurrence had some kind of a defect in the assessment, uh, most of the doubtful lesions or so. We are now using uh, or promoting uh, to have a, a, a double head assessment, to do the standard uh, CTs and imaging techniques, CT scans and so on, also to be combined with a recent and very, very recent PET uh, uh, CT scan. I will not debate whether the bet is necessary or not, also how was fallacies and so, so on, but we try to do everything that we can because if we exclude uh, a patient from having recurrence, uh, it's better than crying with him, uh, doing him nothing after recurrence. Uh, most of the centers in Egypt now uh, do, not, do accept the Milan criteria as a standard for, a standard for living donor and not uh, more than the UCSF criteria. Uh, we, there are no single center, just very, uh, we are, are very, very strict to Milan. Uh, most of the centers accept the UCSF as a maximum, and, in, uh, and any case beyond the UCSF is discussed uh, as, a as a matter of case uh, by case. Um, our group works in many uh, centers in Egypt, but uh, a total of 360 cases uh, of HEC will be shared in doing transplant for them. And still the incidence of recurrence with proper selection and proper assessment is very low. It is less than 10%. And as I sp practically told you, it's um, mostly within the doubtful uh, uh, lesions. Uh, but there are special modifications for the HC patients for the technique and uh, there are special consideration also for a patient with portal vein thrombosis, whether it is malignant or benign and so on. And we are all looking for a, a good biological marker. A good biological marker is the uh, next step in the management of HCC. Uh, comparing the post uh, Milan and take, uh, whatever beyond, there is no much uh, big difference, but there is definite early advantage of HEC patients' outcomes because of the uh, good general conditions they go for transplantation. For, uh, at the end, of course, we all have an MDT meeting for discussion, for pre-operative evaluation, and this is the key for management of HCC. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Hussain. And uh, now uh, the uh, last uh, speaker uh, should be Professor Nasser Abdelbari, Professor of Clinical Oncology. But uh, Professor Susie had done uh, just brief about the systemic therapy. We are lucky in that we have heard the talk about the systemic therapy from Professor Ashraf Omar. Dr. Uh, Susie, please. Uh, I 
will talk about systemic therapy for bacterial carcinoma in just a spotlight. Uh, first, Dr. Uh, Suzy, you can hear the microphone. Okay. Uh, who is uh, the candidate patients? Patients with portal invasion, extra hepatic spread, uh, by reserved liver function with uh, performance status 0 2. This is according to the ISMO guidelines. Uh, what about the first line treatment? Uh, according to ISMO, uh, NCCN, and ASCO guidelines, ATIZO and Bivacizumab is the first line uh, treatment option. There are, uh, there is other, uh, there are uh, other options like uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors, serafinib, and uh, lenvatinib. Uh, ATIZO Viva uh, should be delivered in uh, uh, two patients with a child book class A, uh, ECOG performance status 01. Uh, however, patient should be, should have adequate endoscopic evaluation and management of esophageal varices with approximately six months prior to treatment or according to an institutional practice and based uh, on the assessment of bleeding risks. Uh, this is based on the results of MBRIF, uh, uh, MBRIF 150 uh, trial, this three trial which compared at to Viva to Serafinib. Uh, the overall, there, uh, there was overall survival advantage uh, in uh, patients with uh, child class A. Uh, however, uh, patients with more advanced disease have a greater likelihood of portal hypertension because of the risk of bleeding complication associated with uh, BIVA. And this is study patients who had myocardial infarction or stroke within the previous three months, history of autoimmune disease uh, or on therapeutic anticoagulants, and very important with co-infection with hepatitis B and hepatitis C virus were excluded. Uh, so uh, uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors should be delivered in patients who are not candidate for atezobiva, like sorafenib or lenvatinib, also in patients with a child book class A, um, ACOG performance at 0-1, and uh, treatment with recommended TKIs may be less effective for patients with more advanced liver cirrhosis. Uh, which is better, uh, lenvatinib or sorafenib? Actually, uh, the perfect trial, there, uh, in the perfect trial, there was a trend towards improvement across endpoints for lenvatinib over serafinib. There was uh, no significant difference on overall survival. However, progression-free survival was uh, favoring the lymphatinib group. Uh, but we have noticed that lymphatinib wasn't tested in patients with tumor burden more than 50% of the liver and also uh, uh, very preferred in cases without mean portal vein invasion. These patients uh, patient were excluded from this study. Um, uh, here, the NCCN guidelines added two other options in first line setting, nevilumab and uh, chemotherapy with full Fox uh, regimen. Uh, nevilumab, uh, we have, again, it's uh, indicated in both child A and the child, uh, child B uh, patients, and full Fox uh, treatment regimen chemotherapy uh, is indicated in clinical trial setting because the evidence for both are, uh, uh, is uh, category 2B. What about second line treatment? Uh, following the first line treatment of atezobiva, the second line therapy uh, can be uh, with uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors like sorafenib, lenvatinib, uh, and other like uh, rigorafenib and cabozantinib uh, may be recommended. Actually, there was, there was no published data regarding uh, the second line treatment after first line treatment with atezobiva. Uh, following the first line therapy with serafinib or lenvatinib, another tyrosine kinase inhibitor can be considered. Also, uh, uh, ramsorumab can be considered in patients with alpha fetoprotein more than uh, 400, uh, and uh, also atezobiva can be given as first line if they, uh, as second line if they weren't given uh, as uh, first line. Also, Bimbro. Uh, uh, Bunbiru and Nevilumab can be considered in second line setting. Uh, here is the uh, NCCN guidelines also considered the uh, Dostarlimab as second line treatment. Uh, Bimbiru should be considered in patients with or, uh, with or without microsatellite uh, uh, instability high, while uh, Dostarlimab can, should be considered for patients with microsatellite instability high uh, tumor. Uh, this is a summary of the guidelines, and uh, 
Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, Professor Susie, Associate Professor of Clinical Oncology. On behalf of before we go to transplantation, there is no cutoff value for the duration and the magnitude of reduction of alpha fetoprotein for before transplant. We are eager to hear from you about this issue. Well, thank you for the question. Uh, I think the cutoff value has uh, changed a lot during the uh, last decade, uh, either be before uh, transplant or even before resection or anything. Uh, now is uh, it has reached to the 1,000 as a, a cutoff value. Uh, but uh, we believe that uh, with, uh, w with the extension of the systemic treatment that we are hearing about t today, uh, th this might allow us to transplant or resect or interfere with a higher level of uh, uh, alpha fetoprotein than 1,000. Second question, Professor Amr Helmi. Uh, how to select the patients for, as we said, Combined the resection and the interoperative ablation, and uh, other category of patients we uh, do we are doing uh, pre uh, resection uh, portal vein embolization, and how to select the patient for this modality or that modality? Well, uh, at the beginning, uh, intervention radiology is uh, considered part of the, the surgical team. Uh, there is no liver surgery without, uh, uh, as we say, with the cirrhosis, with fibrosis, uh, it happens uh, that the, what we call the capillarization of the kupfer cell mass and the, of the sinusoids, capillarization of sinusoids, which will uh, uh, decrease the kupfer cell mass, which protects the liver itself and protects the, the body and whole. That's why the HEC, we might find it multifocal because of the deficiency of the kupfer cell mass here and there and inside the liver after the capillarization phenomena of the cirrhosis. So we, we need to, 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 to say this, uh, this uh, the liver, liver is diseased and we want to, to get rid of the lesions. Some lesions are on the surface and some le other lesions are in the depth. So we have to have an interventional radiologist with us we can resect what on the surface of the liver and he or she will ablate the, the deep lesions. And sometimes, sometimes, they would, the intervention radiologist will ask them to help them to act like access surgeons, only access surgeons, to let them ablate uh, lesions that are in some difficult uh, uh, locations. Thank you very much. Professor Asher Farmer, for early detection of HECC, and any coming in you by your markers uh, to aid us, and uh, I am asking you about the GALAD and the GALAD ultrasound. Uh, gender, age, alpha fetoprotein, LA3, alpha fetoprotein, and uh, Bevica, or this gamma carboxyprothrombin. If we add ultrasound, it will increase the performance. Uh, because we hear from Dr. Imam Waqid, in Japan, 60% come early in compared with 20% in Egypt. And Dr. Gamal Asma said the stratification, low, intermediate, high risk, according to many variables. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion, Professor Asher? Thank you. Thank you for the question. I would like to comment on the alpha fetoprotein level, more than 1,000, please. In the most recent guidelines in the BCLC 2020, they mentioned that if patients is having an alpha fetoprotein more than 1,000, and you treated this patient with a good uh, significant decrease of the level of the alpha fetoprotein less than 500, so you can go for liver transplantation with a favorable outcome. Magnitude 500. Yes. This is point number one. Point number two, the guidelines, uh, the, the, the new mar biomarkers. I think uh, the new biomarkers like GAD and GALAD and GALAD US is very promising. 
and the GALD has been validated in so many countries like in the US and in Japan and I believe it's not very much available by now and I think it's very soon will be available and I believe in the, the near future will be replacing the alpha fetoprotein alone as a single biomarker. So in, in the future we are going to see the new biomarker with the ultra ultrasound with an earlier detection of HCC with a good, much more f favorable outcome for the HCC. Thank you very much. Professor Imam Wakid. Until now, we don't have randomized controlled trials to compare between sorafenib or systemic therapy and the local regional therapy for advanced HCC. Is there any coming trial in the future to solve this problem? Compare uh, systemic therapy to local regional treatment? In advanced HCC. Because as, we, yani as we have seen in many guidelines, they adopting to do local regional therapy and even advance it, but they said yani, according to the type of portal vein thrombosis is segmental or main portal or whatever. To, to, to use local regional therapy in advanced HCC, you're doing uh, treatment stage migration and this will be in very select cases. Yes. The standard treatment is systemic therapy. So you cannot compare uh, treatment in selected cases to the standard uh, treatment. Yes. So the, I, I don't think that there will be trials in advanced HCC to compare yes. local regional versus system. Because in, in, in China, even if they did, is, yani did uh, many patients like this, but they said it based on observational studies and no sufficient evidence to do a recommendation. Thank you. Professor, Professor Sami Abdel Wahab, Professor and the Head of Intervention Radiology in Shams University. Do you think that the tear will be included in the version, in the future versions of guidelines and what's its position now in Egypt, radio embolization <coughs> in HECC. Thanks for the same. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, I want to thank you for your time and your time. I want to thank you for your time and your time. I want to thank you for your time and your time. I always want to thank you for your time and your time. I want to thank you for your time and your time. I want to thank you for your time. علاج الكبد في مصر والشرق الاوسط. هو بالنسبه للتير حضرتك هو اب تيل ناو يعني يعتبر كان يو موداليتي اه يمكن بقى لنا 20 سنه بنشتغله لكن اب تيل ناو احنا لسه بنحاول ندخله او بنحاول نحطه في المكان الصحيح ليه يعني. يمكن هو هو دوره سيلكتد قوي في في سبيشال كيسز آه زي ما الدكتور امام وضح وقال لوكو ريجينال واعتبر حاجه من لوكو ريجينال آه في الادفانسد اتش سي سي يعني احنا بنست... طبعا هو ممكن يستخدم في ليجنز اللي هي 5 اور 6 سنتيمتر ويل سيركمسكرايب ما فيهوش انفيجن للبورتال فين لكن مشكلته في الفيري هاي كوست احنا حاجه بنتكلم في حوالي السيشن بتكلف حوالي ربع, ربع مليون جنيه مصري آه وده غالي قوي على المريض المصري وممكن اذا كانت تتحل باذر موديلتي زي التيس يبقى نقدر نعملها زي ما ما البي اس ال سي 2022 ذكرت لكن في الادفانسد كيسز سيلكتد ادفانسد كيسز ديفيوزد انفلتر ديفليجن عامله انفيجن للرايت بورتال فين مثلا او ليفت بورتال فين ما وصلناش للمين ستيم ما فيش ميتاستس ميتاستاتيك ليمف نودز في الحاله دي انا ممكن استخدم التير ابتدي افكر فيه بشرط ان يبقى احنا عندنا شايلد اي بيشنت شايلد اي او ايرلي بي ليت بي لا وتشايلد سي لا وابقى برضه بوتنج ان كونسيدريشن انا ممكن ادي معاه سيستمك ثيرابي. ثانكس فيري ماتش بروفيسور سامي دكتور محمد ابو الفتوح. ذا رول اوف اكسترنال بودي راديو ثيرابي وراديشن ثيرابي. يعني اني رول از ا تايم بينج ان اور بيشنتس؟ بيكوز ات از منشند ان ميني جايد لاينز ناو ديز. اس بي ار تي ستريتاكتيف بودي راديو ثيرابي كود بي يوز لايك ان ابليتيف بروسيجر. Also, there is some talk about the uh, uh, portal vein thrombosis, trying to open it with, uh, bar with stereotactic radiotherapy. And in my department, we have a candidate, an MD Anderson, doing his thesis on this uh, topic. Uh, we, we, we saw some cases, we managed to open the portal vein and then you can do uh, taste or uh, whatever you want after that. Thank you very much. We have the remaining two minutes. One minute for Dr. Warray and one minute for Dr. Hussain. Dr. Warray, the, the patient I have mentioned, large tumor, five, six, seven, eight 
large tumor 11, 10, 14, and I asked you, you go directly to for this or give systemic therapy first because large tumors, the results of this may result in decompensation or post embolization syndrome. يعني as far as I إن الحالة 14 سنتيمتر تيومر. Yes. وطبعا according to the policy اللي الدكتور حسام قالها والبوليس دي موجودة في guidelines كتيرة look for reserve first. Yes. العيان ده candidate for reserve. Future liver remnant. Yes. فطبعا القاعدة الأولانية مع الجراح أستاذنا الدكتور عمرو حلمي أو الدكتور حسام هو يقول إنه أنا دايما بسميها الشهقة. أه العيان ده هايل for surgery لكن لو الريزيرف بتاعه كويس يبقى هيستفيد. So we have to have volumetry, CT volumetry. Yes, we'll volumetry. Because if more than 70%, this is contraindication. لا احنا هنعمل فوليومتري ونكولوليت الليفر فوليوم او الليفت لوب فوليوم للويت بتاع العيانه لقينا ان ان ده كومبارابل اوكي يبقى يو جو دايركت فور سيرجري لان ممكن العيانه دي تحتاج رايت هيباتيكتو بس سيرجري فور 14 سنتيمتر يس ما هو سو ذا سايز از نوت ا ليميتنج فاكتور فور سيرجري اوف كورس وده واحده من الميسنج فاكتورز انا اوضح لك لو انت عندك از لونج از ريميننج فيوتشر ليفر ريمنت از اوكي لو انت عندك بتنكولييت تيومر في الليفت لوب او بتنكولييت تيومر في الرايت لوب والتيو 10 سم ولا 15 سم باسيبل بلانكيوليتد والليفر اولموست اولموست فري هتعمل سيرجري فده فلسفه انك انت بتبص على الريزيرف اولا تمام لكن اللي بي في اللارج تيومرز اللي هي السنترال هنا ذا ماتر اوف اي ريزيرف وبعدين اذا كنا هنعمله له سيكونشال امبولايزيشن اند بورتال فين امبولايزيشن او هنعمل له بورتال فين امبولايزيشن دي هتحتاج ديسكشن دكتور حسام سليمان Mention two patients. First one, naive, small lesion, uh, segment seven, and we plan to go directly for transplantation. And if there is any obstacle, we'll go for ablation. What's your opinion? Uh, yes, it's a difficult site, so uh, it's better to transplant if he's a transplant candidate. And I think it's all, all of us, we should, we must think for the uh, transplantation first, for the difficultly, difficult access, uh, also for the multiple lesions from the beginning, we have to consider transplantation. Transplantation now is accessible, we have many centers, and it's totally covered by the government. So Second patients, we have done two days, and then on the stage, from Barcelona B to A, and now we are planning for, for are planning for transplantation, or if not ablation. Uh, second patient. What? Second patient, I mentioned this is uh, was two lesions segment. Uh, I think seven, two six. Lesions, but two anyway, lesions, this down stage. Two lesions. My opinion, definitely from the beginning, if he is fit for transplantation, go for transplantation. Transplantation. So transplantation is. طول uh, الرأي. Uh, addition, I would like بس to comment على تكملة الكلام دكتور محمد الوراي ودكتور عمري. Uh, يعني residual liver volume it's not a matter of volume only it's a matter of synthetic function and yes, uh, functional function. assessment. Uh, we should. Yeah. There are uh, it's an issue of discussion, thorough discussion. We have to exclude extra hepatic disease, lymph nodes or yes. metastases, essentially, and then we discuss. Uh, if the residual liver volumetrically and functionally in relation to the body patient's body weight, it's not a percentage. Uh, we, we used to, uh, it's not a percentage of the total liver volume. It's a percentage, the residual liver volume in relation to the uh, patient's weight and this also the function. This is a debate. And if we combine this and ablation, they said sequential or concomitant. Sequential after one to four weeks after this, we can start ablation, concomitant both together. What's your preference? Um, actually, I don't have uh, uh, real data to, uh, to evaluate the weight of this uh, combined treatment, but I have uh, uh, real data and uh, uh, all of the guidelines have admitted that surgery is a curative option. Um, even for a larger tumor, if we don't have a curative option, we will have what's called prolonged OS or prolonged survival. We don't have uh, data to wait the uh, option 
الكومباين ثيرابي ويز ار سيكونشال اور ان ذا سيم سيشن امبولايزيشن اند ابليشن اولسو كومباريتيف ستادي و للسيرجري مع لكن وي هاف الفاكس دي بتقول ان السيرجري اكيوريتيف اوبشن فاحنا فروم ذا انتنشن بوينت اوف فيو فروم ذا انتنشن تو كيور تيل ناو احنا نفكر في اوبشن فور ذا بيشنت ثانك يو فيري ماتش لكن لو ما كانش مناسب الكيوراتيف بنخش زي ما البي سي اللي سي قالت اف ذا فيرست لاين از نوت جود هنخش على السكند اوبشن كمايجريتوري ستيشن ثانك يو فيري ماتش ات ذا اند اوف ذا سيشن وي ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور اور ايمينت سبيكرز دكتور كحله دكتور وراد دكتور حسام دكتور سوزي اند اور ايمينت اكسبيرتس بروفيسور دكتور عمرو حلمي بروفيسور اشرف عمر بروفيسور امام واكد بروفيسور سامح عند بروفيسور محمد ابو الفتوح ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور يور انتشن